Hey, did you know that about 90% of what Jesus said was from the Old Testament? Yep, about 90%. A lot of what he said was referencing the Old Testament. You know, today we're going to look at some of the things that Jesus said. And most people think that Jesus came up with these wise sayings on his own. Because all they read is the New Testament. But many, like I said, up to 90% of the, what he said was from the Old Testament. Because he didn't come to, you know, to promote himself. He came as a light to the world. All right? And plus, as a good Jewish boy, he had to learn the Bible. You know, we, we know that. Um, somewhere in the in Jesus' youth, uh, Joseph is not in the picture anymore. Maybe he passed away, or something. More than likely, that that's what happened. And um, and who was there to teach him? That's right. He was homeschooled. <laughs> his mom taught him the word of God, uh, along with his dad also. And you know what he studied? He studied the first. Five books of the Bible. That's right. Even the Jewish Bible and the Christian Bible, the first five books are the same. They're called the Torah. Okay? And so we Christians, we have a cultural disadvantage, us in the West, because we have learned the Bible from a, a, a Western point of view or with that slant uh, or that propensity to go that way. And uh, instead of looking at it like from an Asian or Eastern uh, or mid Middle Eastern view. So this doesn't make us or stop us from learning the Bible, but it does make us ignorant or which means a lack of knowledge of some of the cultural meanings of certain words. But Jesus didn't have that problem. Jesus grew right there, grew up right there. Well, uh, let's look at what, what Jesus said. Now, open your heart to these sayings because if you've been reading your Bible, you won't have any problem with these sayings. But if you haven't been, you're going to think, what? <laughs> All right. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. You know, uh, the next statement I'm going to make is something that I just, I wrote down and then I said, wow, this is so true. I never saw this perspective. I knew about Jesus saying, I am, and um, the story about Moses and the burning bush. But what Jesus was basically saying is, I'm the one who spoke to Moses from the bush. And you might say, how can that be? He wasn't even alive. Well, there is... A, what they are pre-incarnate. In, in other words, before Jesus came uh, and for, had a body, which the Old Testament says, a body, O oh God, you have prepared for me. Because the body, in order for God to come here, he had needed a, a body. And so now God is using somebody, you and me, some bodies, right? And so... Um, before Jesus came and inhabited a body through being born through Mary and Joseph's, uh, you know, Joseph's time, uh, he was around. <laughs> you might go, well, that's a lot deeper study than I want to get into right now. But uh, it's in, in theology, which is the study of God. Uh, there is a word called theophany, which is the appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament before he came in the New Testament. Man, that's, that gets, that's deep. But we won't go there this morning. <laughs> uh, I tell you, the Word of God is awesome, man. God is, God is this unbelievable when you think about I'm just thinking about that that Jesus was the one who spoke to Moses in the burning bush 
So here's the discourse, or this is the passage, that Moses is talking to the burning bush. Okay? In uh, Exodus, um, let me see. I'll put this, the reference down there. But starting in verse 14, I forgot what chapter. Uh, verse 13, it says, Moses said to God, Suppose I go, this is after he's already talking to the burning bush. Okay? Suppose I go to the Israelites and they say, um, and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask, What is his name? Then, what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. <laughs> uh, who am? He am. He is. <laughs> he is. That means, you know, all that we need for salvation is in him. Doesn't that sound like Jesus too? You know, Jesus was correct in saying this because in 1 John 1, uh, in, no, in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it says of Jesus, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, so you can replace Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. God. He was in the beginning. Uh, he was with God in the beginning. You know, uh, one of my Jehovah Witnesses, Jehovah Witness friends that I met on the airplane said, but it says, and the word was God, a small g, uh, referring to all the other gods in, in the world rather than the one and only God. And, and she challenged me. So I challenged her to go back to her own website, which lists a whole bunch of Bibles, and, and see if hers was the only one, which is a New World Translation. Um, and if that was the only one with a small g. And as she sat there on the plane, while well, Wally was there with me, uh, this guy who's a member of our, our church also, uh, he was there with me, and the girl started looking through the through these uh, through the Bibles, and she's like, wow, I, I didn't notice that. We're all learning, right? So it says, he was in the beginning with God. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So he is, he is the I am. So Jesus didn't say things just to anger the religious leaders or make them make him look smarter than them, you know, trying to put them down. You know, they should have done their studies like he did. And that's how he learned all about this. You know, um, and so what he was saying was true because he studied the Bible. Okay? They were looking for a Messiah, but they overlooked him and the things that he did, but not all of them. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, one of the religious leaders of Israel, said to him in John chapter 3, <laughs> this is where, this is pretty awesome, the beginning of John chapter 3. Rabbi, he said, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. John chapter 3 and verse 2. You know. You know? Why did he say, you know, oh, we know? He said, why did he say, we know? It was because there were other Pharisees and religious leaders who believed him also. You know, another synagogue leader approached Jesus in uh, Mark chapter 5, starting with verse 22. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. 
Jesus didn't say, oh, you're a religious leader. I don't want nothing to do with you. No, for God so loved the... That's right. So why did uh, they come to Jesus? It was because they knew he was from God. <laughs> uh, I know these are uh, proofs of who Jesus was, that he was actually God himself, because he said before Abraham was born, I am. So here's another thing Jesus said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You know where this is found? This is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 3, which says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and a day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn in Zion, to appoint unto them, uh, appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, a planting of the Lord, that the Lord might be glorified. So, what about when Jesus was asked? Of all the commandments, which is the most important? This is what he said. He said, the most important one is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, or the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Shema, O Israel. <laughs> wow. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second, because he was asking which is the most important, he was looking at one. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. You notice Jesus put the two together and actually made one, right? Jesus got this from Deuteronomy chapter 6 in verse 4 where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be on your heart. Remember I told you it's all about the heart issue in past messages. Impress them on your children. How are your children going to learn about it? The same way Jesus did. Homeschooling. Right? Every home has a teacher. Parents. <laughs> Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. In other words, when you're doing stuff, think about the Word of God, right? When you're thinking stuff, Think about the Word of God. Yeah. Write them on the doorposts of your home and on your gates. You know, some people have plaques like we have one. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord from Joshua chapter 24. You know, these are just a few things that Jesus said while here. I know that to some, this is all new to you. But it shouldn't be. Why? You should be reading your Bible. Like Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. And why do you say mouth? Well, because Jesus said, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. So you put the Word of God in your heart when you meditate on it. And plus, in those days, uh, or oh, well, in this reference, it's talking meditate means to murmur. You know, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. You shall love the Lord your God. And that's what you're doing. You're murmuring to yourself. Today, we see people walking around talking to themselves. Well, they got, you know, earphones on and they're talking on their phone. Before, we thought it was crazy people talking to themselves. So now, you can walk around. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And everybody's thinking you're going to be talking on your phone. <laughs> no, you're going meditating on the word of God. It says, it shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Why do we meditate on it? Because we want to do it. Not being hearers only, but doers also. Jesus also said that. For then you will make your way prosperous. You want to prosper? Meditate on the Word of God. And then you will have good success. Are you a failure today? Feel like a failure? Meditate on the Word of God. Have I not come, verse 9, have I not commanded you? It's a command for us to do this. Be strong. And of good courage, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Oh man, we should stand up and go in hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because he's always with us. Wow. Remember when Jesus was born? You shall call him Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel translate it mean? God with us. Us. <laughs> you know, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Or Aristotle, some wise philosopher way back when, said this, nobody is thought to be ignorant of the law. In other words, when looking from the law's perspective, you don't know it. That's your problem. That's not the law's problem. Or he said this, not knowing the law is harmful. So you got to Know the Word of God. You know that the devil knows the Word of God? Yeah, when Jesus was tempted, he used the, the devil, used the Word of God against him or to persuade him to do stuff that was tempting God. So, why shouldn't we as believers, as followers of, of Jesus, know the Word of God? John, in 1 John chapter 5, in verse 13, he says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Are you questioning eternal life? Read the Word of God. It will confirm that you belong to God when you received the gift. John 1.12, to as many as receive him, who is it talking about? The Word of God. God gives them the privilege. I like to say this. God gives us the privilege to become one of His sons or daughters. Wow. Why did it say that you may know you have eternal life? Because it's not, it's not automatic. You know, how do you know something? You have to learn or study it. You know, uh, let me just break in this message a little. And... uh tell you something about about my own personal life I actually hated my dad and you know what one day um, after I got saved my, the Lord changed my heart towards my dad of course and then uh, one day I told April you need to pray for me and she said why I said because I'm just like my dad and I realized I was studying and all the things that he did that I hated. I looked at him like, oh, that's why I hate him. That's why I hate him. I know I was studying him. Why did I become like him? Because I was studying him. You know, if people have hurt you in the past, forgive them and ask God to take away those the knowledge of that studying that you did. And, Man, that's why I hate them. That's why I don't like them. Either. You know, we have to study the Word of God. When? The Bible says, you shall meditate in it day and night. It should be continually, like it says, on our hands and in, in the front of our minds. Whew. Yeah. Wow. Someone once said, if they were 
to gather evidence that you were a Christian or a follower of Jesus, would they have enough evidence? <laughs> that you may know you have eternal life. This speaks to the fact that, yes, you and I need to know. And the word know there has to do with intimacy. And it involves our intimacy with the word of God. You know, we need to be convinced, persuaded, and willing to take a stand for Jesus without any hesitation. Why? Because we know already we have eternal life. Jesus said, if you destroy this body, so what? They cannot fear him who can destroy your body and your soul. Wow. You know, Jesus is called the Word of God in, in John chapter 1 because in one aspect, it is a reference to him being the living Word of God. How do we know or have intimacy with our eternal life? Because we know we have eternal life because we're spending time with the Word of God. You know, every time you spend time in the Word of God, you're spending time with Jesus. <laughs> wow. That might be another bing. Wow. Aha moment in your life. And it has been in my life. As you read His Word, you are spending time, intimate time with Him. And you will come to know Him better. And He will reveal things to you that you didn't know before. Jeremiah 33, 3. It says, Call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't, you did not know or you do not know of. Wow. And God knows everything. So we can know things through having time with Him. Knowing God starts with knowing His Word. So if you say, well, I haven't been doing that. Well, start today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the revelation that every time we read the Bible, we are reading the Word of God. Even though in the Greek it says it's the logos, it's the written Word of God. Jesus came to reveal Himself, the rhema, the living Word of God. Help us to every time we listen to, every time we read, every time we meditate on Your Word, we get to know You more intimately. And then we will love You with all our heart, our mind, soul, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us, Lord, I pray, in the word of God's name, in Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Wow. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed this study. All right. Hi, Mom, and brother Keone. Hey, mahalo for watching. Aloha. <laughs>